Our next speaker up is Robbie Kramer, who up to this point at the event has been doing the introductions. I'm doing his now, of course, because he's a speaker at this specific point. This will be his third speech at the 21 convention, last year in Orlando, Florida being his first. Uh, just about seven weeks ago, at the time of filming here now, uh, he was in London, England, hosting the event, just like here, as well as giving a speech. Actually, the keynote address. Pretty big job. His speech this time around is going to be merging inner game and outer game, as you can see here at the tip of my cane. It's going to be awesome. So without further ado, I, guys, I present to you guys your host, MC, and speaker, Robbie Kramer, the Hebrew hammer of confidence. <laughs> I love, uh, I love my new nickname. That's great. So, you guys have gotten to know me a little bit throughout the, uh, the conference, and uh, it's great being an MC because I'm kind of already warmed up in a cool way. That's why I do it. So, uh, my speech today is on merging inner and outer game, as Anthony said. Uh, a lot of you guys have been coming up during the course of the weekend asking, like, are you inner game or are you outer game? And my answer is always, there should be no difference. It's all just confidence, in my opinion. So I'm going to tell you uh, my story first, how I got into all this stuff. Um, growing up, I was a golf and poker geek. This is me right here. In uh, college, I played golf for UC San Diego. Up until I was 18, my life was wake up, turn on the golf channel before school, go to school, go to the golf course, come home, watch the Golf Channel, go to bed. So as you can imagine, I didn't have much of a social life. Um, I was kind of uh, not really an introvert. I, I feel like I'm more of an extrovert. But throughout my time in you know, high school, middle school, my life was golf. And then in college, I picked up poker as well. And uh, if any of you guys play online poker, which you can't anymore in the US, but back in the day, you can uh, basically spend hours clicking a mouse. And if you're making money, it's a pretty good, pretty good thing to do, except, once again, not very social. And I realized at the end of college that I wasn't good enough for the PGA Tour. I didn't want a career as a professional poker player just because I didn't feel like that would be much of a life other than easy money. And I didn't really know what I was going to do. But um, a buddy of mine got a job working for a venture capital firm. And uh, this, is, this is me at the VC firm. Uh, got my suit on, selling these products here. And uh, the job was to raise money for startup companies. I'd never done any sales before in my life. I had no idea how to sell anything. And I never thought of myself as a salesman. But I did know that if I learned to sell, that'd probably be a really good thing, you know, a good life skill to have. So I said, whatever, I'll take this job. I have no other prospects. It sounds good. So I started sales. And at the same time, another friend of mine introduced me to the book The Game. Who's read The Game? Most people. And I think a lot of people, this is kind of our introduction into personal growth. It was for me. Um, as a guy, I was never interested in personal growth. I was like, eh, that's for girls and gays. But hey, yeah, I'll read a book <laughs> about picking up girls. That, that sounds great. And um, at first, when he showed me this book, I'm like, eh, I don't need that stuff. I'm, I got game, not really, but I pretended I did. And he's like, no, trust me, you want to read this book. So I, you know, I turned it open, read it within like a day and a half. I think I stayed up all night. I guess I'm not that fast of a reader. Some people are like, yeah, I read it in two hours. OK. So <laughs> um, reading the game was really cool because to me, it, it was like a the first time in my life where I realized that there was actually a way to improve yourself in an area that was really important to me. It's like, wow, I could get better with girls? Because up until that point, the only women I had in my life were, you know, meet a girl at a party, make out with her. She's my girlfriend for three years. I basically did that for three women throughout you know, high school and college. And I was always envious of those guys that could just kind of go up there, chat up a girl, take her home and go on dates. I had never even gone on a date until I was 23 after reading the game. Um, I had no idea what a date was even like. So it was, it was great to just be able to, to realize that I had the power to improve. And uh, I remember the first night after reading the game, uh, I put it down. And 
kind of after reading it, I was like, okay, there's some stuff in here that's cool. There's some stuff that's a little bit weird, but I'm willing to try anything. I had no idea what was good, what was bad. Uh, so I was like, whatever, I'll try it. Went out, and I remember one thing really stood out for me. I remember if you call a girl a cartoon character, she'll like you. I was like, okay, I'll give that a try. So I see this hot brunette. I walk up, and I'm like, hey, you kind of look like Minnie Mouse. She was like, Minnie Mouse. I'm like, yeah, Minnie Mouse. And then I was like, shit, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> go to the bathroom, come back. I'm like, hey, Minnie Mouse, you want a shot? She's like, yeah. OK, cool. So I go back to the bar. I get a shot for me, get a shot for her. I come back. Here you go, Minnie Mouse. She like rolls her eyes, looks at me, takes a shot. I'm like, was it good, Minnie Mouse? She's like, dude you got to stop calling me Minnie Mouse because I actually really like you. I was like, what? This girl likes me? What do I do now? And then I remember from the game there was this, uh, I think they called it like the evolution phase shift, <laughs> where, <laughs> where you make out with the girl by segueing, by getting her to like, you know, bite your arm and bite your neck and do this other crazy stuff. I had no idea how to do it, but I was like, come with me. And I pulled her to the side. I'm like, you know, lions, you know, before they have sex, they bite each other. So I'm like biting her, she's biting me, we're making out a minute later. And then she got all turned on. So I was like, hey, let's, let's go. Dragged her into a cab, went back to my place, and we hooked up. And the whole interaction was maybe 15 minutes. And the next morning I remember, oh my god, I found the holy grail. This is so easy, I just have to go up to girls and call them Minnie Mouse and do this stupid little lion biting arm gay thing and, and I'll have girls every night for the rest of my life. Life is good. Uh, and then quickly, uh, after about three more months of trying that every single night and zero results, I realized, all right, maybe there's something else going on here. So that's when I decided to become a pickup artist. Now, I don't really, I, I no longer consider myself a pickup artist. When I was trying to be a pickup artist, I certainly wasn't picking much up at all. Uh, more of a... I don't know, failure artist, whatever you want to call it. But these are some of the things I tried on my endeavor to become good with women. I tried uh, faking it till you make it. So when I give a girl the look, she knows she's coming home with me. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> trying that. Like, yeah, I'm cool, I'm confident, I'm alpha. I'm like walking around like this. Um, that didn't work so well. I tried dressing like a homo. <laughs> <laughs> wearing these silly outfits that didn't really match my personality, but because these guys said, wear these outfits and you'll be like this peacock. Okay, I'll try it. Um, that didn't work out so hot. I tried memorizing canned material. That just put me in my head. Uh, didn't, didn't do much for me at all. I tried trying to entertain and impress. Magic tricks, lock it up, like being this court gesture this big over-the-top guy. Um, and I got a lot of attention that way, but that's about all I got. And after a while, they're like, OK, see you later. I tried next, the woo-woo years. So after trying all this outer game stuff, you could say, uh, it wasn't really working so hot. I was, because I was going out and doing stuff, I was getting better. I was getting over approach anxiety. I was you know, definitely improving, because the ultimate thing you can always do is get experience. Like, there is no substitute for experience. So just the sheer act of going out and trying a lot of stuff was amazing. And then I heard about this stuff. Uh, I call it woo-woo, but you can call it new age things, you know, different modalities to build your confidence. Because I realized that I didn't feel confident. I felt like I had to be this guy. I had to put on this act. And I learned, or I heard, that you can do this inner work and then be really confident. Like, after you do all this inner game stuff, you'll just feel like a million bucks. 